be your style use pitch shampoo. Don't despair, use your head, save your hair, use pitch Is your shampoo doing right by you? Yes, is your shampoo doing right by you? Well, my shampoo lathers all right, but it doesn't remove my dandruff. I've tried one shampoo after another. They all suds up and rinse out, but I still have dandruff. If your shampoo is letting you down, when it comes to removing dandruff, switch to Fitch. Fitch is dandruff remover shampoo. It's guaranteed to remove all dandruff. Medical authorities say there are two kinds of dandruff. One is loose and flaky. It's the unsightly kind. The other clings to the scalp. It's the invisible, irritating kind. If your present shampoo is doing only half the job, removing only part of your dandruff, remember, Fitch removes both kinds completely. So, be free of unsightly dandruff. Be free of invisible, irritating dandruff. Yes, be free of all embarrassing dandruff. Fitch is the only shampoo who's guaranteed to remove dandruff with first application is backed by one of the world's largest insurance firms. So switch to Fitch. At drug counters, barber, and beauty shops, ask for Fitch's dandruff remover shampoo. Fitch shampoo does right by you. The F.W. Fitch Company, makers of Fitch Shampoo, presents the Fitch Bandwagon, written by Ray Singer and Dick Chevrolet, with Elliot Lewis, Janine Roos, Ann Whitfield, Robert North, Walter Scharf and his music, and starring Alice Fay and Phil Harris. For weeks now, the Harris children, like children all over the world, have been thinking of nothing but Christmas and Santa Claus. They've been on their best behavior. And as we look in, we find Alice complimenting the children on their good deportment. Now, you've been particularly good, Alice. You've gone to sleep early, you've put all your toys away, you've finished all your food at mealtime, and you drink all your milk. Gee, I've been a regular little angel, haven't I, Mommy? Oh, no. No, let's not go that far. As for you, honey, you've been just as good as Alice. You, too, have been going to bed early, putting your toys away and eating all your food. The only thing is, you haven't been drinking all your milk. Well, I tried to, but you know how that stuff gags me. (laughs) Quiet, Phil. I'm talking to little Phyllis. Where is she? She was here a minute ago. She went in the den, Mommy. I'll get her. Phyllis! Phyllis! Mommy wants you to come... Phyllis! What are you doing with those crayons? Oh, I was just going to draw a picture on the wall. Don't do that. You know we got to be good till Christmas. But I've been good for three weeks now. Gee, how long can they expect a kid to be so good? Alice, it's an awful strain. I know, but it's only four more days. Don't crack up now. been so good for so long. I know, but as Daddy always says, it ain't been easy, Buster. (laughs) Alice, have you asked Mommy and Daddy about Santa Claus yet? No, but I will. Children, what's going on in here? Yeah, what are you two doing? Oh, nothing. Just sitting here being good. (laughs) Mommy, Daddy, we want to ask a favor. We'd like to stay up and see Santa Claus when he brings the presents on Christmas Eve. Yeah, well, but, honey, he has a lot of other stops to make, and, well, he might get here very late. Oh, can't we, Daddy, please? Well, uh, uh, okay. Now, you kids continue to behave yourselves, and I promise that you'll see Santa on Christmas Eve. Now, run along and play. Thanks, Daddy. Gee, I can hardly wait for Christmas Eve. Phil, why did you promise the children that? Now, if they don't see Santa, they'll be very disappointed. But they're going to see him. And just to make sure, I'll dress up like Santa and come down the chimney. <laughs> they won't be able to tell me from the real one. <laughs> Daddy. Yes, dear? Don't you dress up and make believe you're Santa like last year. Boy, was that corny. <laughs> Alice, I still can't figure out how they knew it was me last year. What did I do that was wrong? Well, for one thing, you were supposed to come in singing Jingle Bells. I did. But those lyrics, I can still hear them. 
Ham, hocks, and turnip greens, they melt right in your mouth. I can't eat yet. I know how many grits, and that's what I like about the South. Yeah! <laughs> And what's wrong with those lyrics? That isn't the way we sing it up north. Can I help it if you Yankees don't know the right words? <laughs> you don't think I can play St. Nick? We'll get somebody else to do it. I wonder why the girls are so anxious to see Santa Claus. Phil, do you suppose... Gee, I hope not. Hey, Alice, look, we just got to produce a Santa Claus on Christmas Eve. Well, don't worry about it, Phil. Well, I got to worry about it. Somebody's got to worry about it. It's important. I gotta think of something. Now let me concentrate. If I think hard enough, something will come out. Good morning, Philip. <laughs> For this, I had to concentrate, Jack. Hello, William. Hello, dear. Uh, Philip, are you in pain? You have such a strained expression on your face. I'm thinking. <laughs> now, if you want to talk to me, come back later. I got a thought running through my mind. I'll wait. Through your mind, it's only a short dash, and it won't take long. <laughs> Get a load of this red skeleton of Encino. <laughs> Look, don't bother me, Willie. I'm trying to think so that we, we've got to get somebody to play Santa Claus for the kids on Christmas Eve, and we want to get someone who looks and, and sounds like the real thing. Well, if that's your problem, you needn't look any further. I shall be glad to portray Christopher Kringle. Christopher. <laughs> well, Donner, my Blitzen. <laughs> Christopher, find Santa Claus you'd make. I'd make an excellent one. I'm quite an actor, you know. I can see myself popping out of the chimney, bounding into the living room and saying, Ho, 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 and a Merry Christmas to you little kitties. And what do you wee darlings desire as a Yuletide memento? Thank you, Catherine Cornell. <laughs> Look, get lost, Index. Go make a double entry. Somewhere. Well, I guess I'm not wanted around here, so... Oh, wait now, wait. Don't take it to heart, Willie. You're not a bad guy. You're always trying to do the right thing. Oh, do you really think so, Philip? Yeah. It ain't your fault that you're a schnook and don't know how. <laughs> Very well, Mr. Harris. I'll leave and let you do things your own blundering way. Goodbye, Alice, dear. <laughs> and to think she could have married Rudy Valley. <laughs> there goes a cute little character. He has all the charm of live bait. <laughs> hey, look, Alice, seriously, what are we going to do? Now, we're going to have to get someone for the kids who look like Santa, and I... Hey, wait a minute. I got just the guy, Don Wilson. Oh, Phil, Don would be perfect. He's jovial, he has a cheery face, and he's rotund. Yeah, and he's fat, too. <laughs> hey, honey, why don't you call Don and see if he can come over Christmas Eve? All right. I'll call him right now. Yeah. Gee whiz, the children never have seen Don, and they can't possibly recognize him. I can hardly wait to see how the kids react on Christmas Eve. You know, there's something wonderful about watching a kid on Christmas, waiting for Santa and listening for those jingle bells. <laughs> Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in the one-horse open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in the one-horse open sleigh. Dashing through the snow in a one-horse open sleigh. O'er the fields we go, laughing all the way. Bells on pop hill ring, they're making spirits bright. What fun it is to ride and sing a sleighing song tonight. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Hey! Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Hey! Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. A day or two ago, I thought I'd take a ride, and soon Miss Alice Fay was seated by my side. The horse was lean and lank, misfortune seemed his luck. He got into a drifted bank and we, we got upset. Jingle like bells, ha, 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 ho, ho, the bells ringing, gaily bell. singing, merrily we go. Jingle oh, oh, bells, black and white, a snow so cold and crisp and light, with sharp and glowing, we are going the way. our way through the night. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one-horse open sleigh. Hey, hey, jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. 
Oh, what fun it is to ride in an open sleigh. Jingle bells, jingle bells, jingle all the way. Oh, what fun it is to ride in a one horse, one horse open, open, one horse open sleigh. Gee whiz, I sure hope Don can make it. You know, he's going to be terrific as Santa Claus because... Of, uh-oh, that must be Frankie. Hi, Curly. Hi, Frankie. Come on in. Yeah. Hey. What do you got in all those packages? Christmas presents. I got some things for the kids. Alice. And here's something for you, Curly. For me? Oh, you got a present for little curly-headed me. <laughs> Yeah, I got you. Oh, gee, Frankie. That's sweet of you. <laughs> I don't... I don't know what to say. That's all right, Curly. But the thought... <laughs> gee, you don't know how I appreciate it. it well, it, it touches me deeply. You're going to get sloppy about it. I'll take it back. <laughs> <laughs> well, I appreciate it, Frankie, but... Well, I didn't want you to go out and spend a lot of money on me. I didn't. <laughs> I spent most of my money on the kids. After all, Christmas is for them. Where's Alice? Oh, she's inside calling Don Wilson. You see, the kids want to see Santa Claus on Christmas Eve, so we're asking Don to play it. Well, why are you getting Don Wilson to play Santa? Well, what else am I going to do? Well, let him stay up and see the real Santa Claus. Yeah, but I don't know what time he's coming. <laughs> Did you say something? Yeah. Why don't you let the kids see the real Santa Claus? Move over, Frankie. You'll get some of that stuff on me. Get over. <laughs> You're another one of those cynics, huh? Wise guy who don't believe. You do? Of course. You know, just because you never seen him don't mean he's not there. You must realize, Curly, there are some things in life that are inexplicable. <laughs> Psychic phenomena that are ethereal and beyond the comprehension of we mere mortals. What was that? What's the matter? Did I say something vulgar? <laughs> no, Curly, you can take my word for it. The real guy will show up. Okay, him. okay, Remley, stop. With All I got to say is it's a good thing kids have more common sense and faith than most grown-ups. Christmas wouldn't be much fun. I know that on Christmas Eve, old St. Nick and his reindeer will come flying through the sky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But do you mind if we have somebody stand by just in case Santa's forced down with a low fog over Burbank? <laughs> all right, all right. Scoff if you will. I'll drop over Christmas Eve. Then maybe you'll sing a different tune. Goodbye, infidel. <laughs> <coughs> that Remley, I don't know what to think Phil, about. Phil, I called on, but he can't make it. However, he said he has a lot of active friends, and he'll send one of them over. But he said we'd have to pay the actor $10. So what? Uh, $10. It'll be worth it to make the kids happy. <laughs> hey, honey, did Don say he could get someone positively? Yes, Phil. He, sa he said he was sure he'd get someone. Yes, I sure hope so, because this is very important. Hey, if anything would go wrong, I don't know what oh, I'd do. Oh, Phil, please stop worrying. It's still three days till Christmas Eve, and if you keep this up, you'll drive yourself batty. <laughs> And for three days, Phil worried. Now as we look in on the Harris home, it's Christmas Eve. Phil is downstairs trimming the tree and impatiently awaiting the arrival of Santa. Alice is upstairs reassuring the children that he'll be there. But, Mommy, it's ten o'clock already and Santa isn't here yet. Gee, Mommy, do you think maybe he isn't coming? Oh, don't fret, girls. Of course he's coming. So... You better watch out, you better not cry, you better not pout, I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. He's making a list, checking it twice, gonna find out who's naughty and nice. Santa Claus is coming to town. He sees you when you're sleeping, he knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good, so be good for goodness sake. Oh, you better watch out, you better not cry, better not pout, I'm telling you why, Santa Claus is coming to town. You 
he'll be riding with his reindeer in the great big open sleigh with a great big bag of presents and he'll give them all away. He sees you when you're sleeping. He knows when you're awake. He knows if you've been bad or good, so for goodness sake. Oh, you better watch out. You better not cry. Better not pout. I'm telling you why. Santa Claus is coming to town. There. Well, that's the last ornament. Hey, looks pretty good. Now if Santa only shows up, what a Phil, one... Phil, I was just upstairs with the children. Oh, Phil, the tree looks beautiful. Yeah. Hey, honey, how are the kids? Are they impatient? Oh, they'll be all right. Oh, Merry Christmas, everybody. Merry Christmas, Frankie. Hey, Merry Christmas. Hey, Frankie, what do you got there? Milk and crackers for Santa Claus. <laughs> <laughs> I put them on the mantle for him every year. Hey, where's the kids? Oh, they're upstairs waiting for Santa. Yeah, and I'm waiting, too. When is the guy going to show up? It's after 10 already. Be patient, Curly. He's got a long trip from the North Pole. Besides, his reindeer ain't as young as they used to be in it. <laughs> Keep quiet. I'm paying the guy 10 bucks. You'd think he'd get here on time. This subterfuge is also unnecessary. <laughs> hey, hey, there's a door. That must be Santa now. I'll let him in. I'll go with you, honey. Okay. Well, Merry Christmas, Merry Christmas, Santa Claus. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas, and where's my ten dollars? <laughs> Jackson, what are you doing here? Well, Don Wilson happened to mention that you were paying $10 for a Santa Claus. <laughs> I had an old pair of red flannels lying around. <laughs> Jackson, hey, since when do you have to go around playing Santa Claus for money? Well, Phil, you don't begrudge me a guest shot once in a while, do you? <laughs> well, I only have one show, you know. <laughs> I have to pick up a little late. Oh, hello, Frankie. Merry Christmas. <laughs> Merry Christmas me, you imposter, you. Ah, fine look at Santa Claus. I think I make a very good looking Santa Claus in my red suit with a pillow under it for a stomach. I whatever. think you look ridiculous. Look at your costume. It's bagging at the knees. That's my stomach. It keeps slipping. <laughs> hey, Jackson, I want you to know it's sure nice of you to do this for us, but, well, hey, look, Frankie's right. You don't look exactly like Santa Claus. You sure don't. Look at that white beard. Where did you rent that moth-eaten thing? <laughs> it's not rented. I was playing gin rummy with Monty Woolley, and I won it. <laughs> like me as Santa Claus, oh, and I'll just... pay no off. attention to these two, Jack. I think you make a wonderful Santa Claus of paying you. Phil, give Jack the $10. Okay, here you are, Jackson. Thanks. Gee. Plus, we'll get a kick out of this. I'll go call her. And Jack... Try to convince her you're really Santa Claus, huh? Little Phyllis? Phil, I thought I was doing this for your benefit. <laughs> if it's for little Phyllis, I wouldn't think of taking money. No, me. no, no, no. It's always a deal. Oh, please don't embarrass But for the kid, I wouldn't think of taking the ten dollars. Well, if you insist... Seven fifty is plenty. <laughs> of a heel do you think I am? <laughs> now, Phil, look. Sweet of you, Jackson, to play Santa Claus for my two kids. Oh, two kids? <laughs> <laughs> well, look, Phil, I can't take any money at all for this. Tell you what, if you want it, you can buy me a little something for Christmas. Like what? Anything that Alice can afford. I don't care. <laughs> Okay, look, Jackson, the kids will be down in a minute to see Santa, and it's very important that you make them think that you're the real McCoy. Now, do you think you can act the part? Oh, I shouldn't have any trouble, Phil. You know, I have great histrionic ability. Yeah, but you're such a lousy actor. <laughs> what? 
This impersonation is preposterous. Santa Claus won't like this. Come along, children. He's right in here. Well, there he is. Gee, Santa Claus. Hello, Santa. Ho, ho, ho. Merry Christmas and hello again. This is Santa Claus talking. <laughs> Come here, children, and tell me how you like old Santa. We like you fine, Santa. You're just like we pictured you. Yes, you're jolly and you have a nice fat tummy. But... But what? Well, isn't your tummy awful low? <laughs> oh, that. That's the new look, kiddies. <laughs> wearing it four inches lower this year. <laughs> well, kids, are you happy to see Santa? Gee, doesn't he look good? He sure does, Daddy. He looks kind of old. I am, little girl. After all, I'm Santa Claus. I've lived for hundreds and hundreds of years. How old are you? Thirty-eight. <laughs> Santa has to be going now. Here are your toys, girls. Thank you, Santa. Yeah, thanks. Well, I'll be seeing you next year. Merry Christmas to all and all a good night. Up, Dancer, up, Prancer, up, Donner and Blitzen. Ho, ho, ho. And away we go. Santa Claus. I like him. I liked him, but I was a little disappointed. Why? I expected him to take out his violin and play Love in Bloom. <laughs> you mean you kids knew it was Mr. Benny? Sure, but we didn't want to say anything and hurt his feelings. Daddy, when is the real Santa coming? Well, um, um, well, you see, honey, um, he, um... He'll be here soon, kids. Oh, Frankie. <laughs> listen, children, listen to me. Now, uh, he, he has a lot to do, and, and he may be very late, so I'll tell you what. I'll tell you a Christmas story, and, 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 and then maybe you'll run off to bed, huh? Well, all right, Daddy. But we wanted so much to see him. All right, honey, maybe next year. He's busy. Now, look, you sit up on my lap, and I'll tell you the story. You ready? was the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse. The stockings were hung by the chimney with care, in hopes that St. Nicholas soon would be there. The children were not... Na- hey, I thought I heard sleigh bells. No, I guess. The children were nestled all snug in their beds, while visions of sugar plums danced through their heads. Alice, what are those bells? What's the... Shh. Quiet, Curly. Phyllis, look, in the fireplace. It's Santa Claus, the real one. But, uh, Merry Christmas, Santa. Frankie... Who are you talking to? I don't see anybody. The kids do. Look at them. Gee, Santa, we knew you'd come. They couldn't fool us with any make-believe, Santa Claus. We were waiting just for you. Oh, sure. We've been very good girls. Oh, what a lovely dollhouse. Thank you. And all these things are for me? Can I open them now? All right, Santa, we'll wait till morning. Thank you very much. And a Merry Christmas to you too, Santa. Of course we'll tell them. Merry Christmas and goodbye, Santa Claus. Told you he'd show up, Curly. But Frankie, uh, I don't get it. I I heard it, but I didn't see him. Of course you didn't. He sure is a nice-looking old gent. Mm. 
Alice, uh, did you see him? I'm not sure, Phil. I, I almost thought I saw him standing there. But Alice, how could it be? If he was standing there... Phil, what are you staring at? That... that spot on the rug there. Alice, it's snow. the new look in fashion. Well, there's a new look in hair beauty, too. Yes, women everywhere are achieving that look of softer, shinier hair with a marvelous new product, Fitch Cream Shampoo. This wonder-working shampoo is made with two beneficial beauty aids, lanolin and olive oil. Lanolin is used to soften the hair, to leave it smooth and caressable. Olive oil is used to bring out sparkling highlights, to accent the glowing radiance of your hair. Fitch Cream Shampoo is so easy to use. A small dab quickly whips into a fragrant, creamy lather that thoroughly cleanses hair and scalp. Then just rinse with plain water and every bubble of suds is gone. After shampooing, you'll find your hair stays in place. It stays soft. And it stays shining, as though it had been brushed and brushed and brushed. Fitch is economical, too. Compare the size of the jar. Compare its low cost. At drug or toilet goods counters, buy Fitch Cream Shampoo for that flattering new look of softer, shinier hair. Children, kids. Hey, come here a minute. Look, Santa said something to you, and you said, yes, we'll tell them. What did he say? He told us to be sure and wish you and Mommy a Merry Christmas. Now, wasn't that sweet of him? Now, girls, you're all tucked in. You've seen Santa, and you have everything you want. So go right to sleep. Good night. Good Good night. night. Good night, babies. Daddy. Yes, dear? Can I have a drink of water? Go to sleep. (laughs) This is Phil Harris. The F.W. Fitch Company, Alice and I, and our entire cast want to thank all of you so much for listening to our show and wish you the best Christmas you've ever had. Good night. Laugh a while, let a song be as values, Fitch for softer, shinier hair, use Fitch's new cream shampoo. It's made with both lanolin and olive oil. Lanolin to soften, olive oil for sparkling highlights. Try Fitch cream shampoo, Bill Foreman speaking.